He's got a 17-year-old Filipina nanny. She's doing the cooking, the cleaning, spreading her legs, and doing the grocery shopping. Let's bring this guy down. Now, hey, you know Scotty Boy loves to walk. So you're yeah, waking up about six o'clock or so uh, every morning. It was a 30, 40 minute walk down to the Tom and Toms. I got the same breakfast every morning. It was a Americano, hot Americano and a continental style breakfast. Man, just so you know, the Americano at Tom and Tom's is great. I mean, it couldn't be any better. Actually, Tom and Tom's in Dumaguete is my favorite coffee shop in the Philippines. I mean, the seats are so comfortable. If you've been there, okay, you know what I'm talking about. Good coffee, uh, good environment. I mean, most of all, it was just the coffee the location right in front of the right in front of the ocean it was perfect i love that coffee shop so this breakfast special at tom and tom's it was about uh 300 pesos for the breakfast and the coffee so every morning i mean i would sit there for a few hours in tom and tom's i would study the stock markets and enjoy my coffee enjoy the comfortable chair i miss being there at that coffee shop One side story of Tom and Tom's. I was sitting in Tom and Tom's, minding my own beeswax, as usual. On my left, there was some date happening, okay? This Filipina, she was on a date with some uh, foreign dude, and of course, the obligatory friend went along. She was also the... So there's three of them sitting there at that table. And of course, the obligatory friend was just staring at her phone the entire time. So she's on a date with this dude. Uh, but I mean, her and I, we are eye flirting the entire time. I mean, obviously, she is not interested in this bozo she's sitting there having a date with. He was the Typical, I mean, the big stomach, he's got the tank top on. This girl, she was interested in Scotty Boy, and hey, I was kind of interested in her too. She wasn't bad. But yeah, you know, I am with a bohol girl at this time, but hey, you know, uh, we're on different islands. If we're on different islands, Scotty Boy is free to flirt a little bit. Hey, you gotta have a little bit of fun in life. So anyway, that eye flirting with this girl, it was fun while it lasted, but hey, Scotty Boy's not sitting there forever, I was getting out of Dodge. Because hey, it is on to what I usually do next. I mean, after a few hours of staring at stock charts, it was time to go for a walk on the boulevard. And uh, quite often I was just sitting there by myself and I'd meet up with friends. I mean, people would just sit down next to me and we'd become friends. So uh, there were a few times I'm just sitting there by myself and somebody would sit down next to me. Of course, of course it's a foreign dude. I mean, great people, regular Joe's like you and myself. I mean, hey, I mean, everybody wants to meet new friends. I mean, why not? Anyway, I mean, you know, you sit down, you talk with someone. It doesn't mean you have to be friends with them. You can just have a friendly conversation. I mean, most of the guys I talked to in Dumaguete, we just talked and I never saw them again. But uh, one of the guys who did become my friend, he was a American guy from Utah. He was, uh, he was 70 years old. Now, I was surprised when he told me he was 70. I mean, the guy, he looked like 55. He looked fantastic for his age. So this guy, he was married to a 27-year-old Panay. He married her uh, a few years ago. So they're married and the two of them are living together in Utah. But every year for one month, they come to Dumaguete because her family is nearby. So things were going along very well in his marriage. So that's good, right? I mean, hey, you have two level-headed people, it's not difficult to make a, a marriage or a relationship work out. I mean, obviously the big risk when you bring a Panay overseas is, you know, she's gonna change after a year or maybe after five years and she's gonna take half your stuff. When I was in uh, Thailand one time, I met a German friend on Khao San Road. So this guy, he was a big fan of the Philippines. So I mean, he and I had something in common. This German guy, he leased land in uh, Mindoro. 
in Mindoro, in, in the Luzon, the south, southern part of the Luzon Islands. But anyway, I mean, he was married to a Panay. He brought her to Germany. Ten years later, the day she got her, as he put it, the day she got her citizenship, boom, she was out of there. And I'm assuming she got half of his stuff, but I don't know about that. I didn't ask him, but I mean, they even had three kids together and she still took off. I mean, obviously she had this move planned for, I don't know, five years maybe, who knows, but she kept the act in order. She maintained a good wife, but she had this thing on her mind the whole time. I mean, obviously, but I mean, that can happen. But anyway, back to Dumaguete. The 70 year old dude, and excuse me, I, I kind of forgot his name. So when I met him, um, I was just sitting there by myself. He sat down next to me and we started talking. Very friendly guy, probably the most friendly guy I've ever met. So yeah, I was just sitting about right here when uh, my new friend sat down next to me. But when we met, he was alone because his wife was in the province visiting her family. He said he can't go to the province. It's like, you know, sleeping on wood kind of life. He says he can't do that. So, I mean, he was doing what I was doing. He went to the boardwalk to go for a walk by himself, just like I did. So, I mean, I was sitting there by myself, just staring at the ocean. And this dude, I mean, he just sat down right next to me. It was great. Two friendly guys who like to chat. So, I mean, we got along well. We had a, we had a fun time talking all day. So, yeah, he had been going to the fills since the 80s this guy so he was telling me stories of his past um he's always been single so he had a lot of interesting stories to tell about life back in the 80s in the philippines so we hung out every day until his wife came back so there was another uh, guy like i was again sitting down by myself in front of the ocean just staring into the ocean and uh, this other guy sat down next to me so yeah i was sitting either here or on these benches here i, I can't remember but i was just sitting there by myself i mean when i'm sitting down alone looking at the ocean i mean i'm just in deep thought i love getting in deep thought i'm just staring out into the horizon and the thing is when you're in deep thought there are no limits to your imagination anything is possible that's what i love about just sitting there by myself anyway yeah so i'm on this bench this guy sat sits down next to me we start chatting so this guy is from the uk He's a farmer, but he's only he's only farming for six months of the year, and then he's got six months free. So he decided at 65, he's gonna start living where it's warm for six months a year. He and I had a good one-time chat, and I never saw the guy again. The next day, he was heading out to Sigihor to meet some girl that he met on the internet. So this guy, uh, this UK gent, he was, I'm guessing he was 65, and he was meeting an older lady. He was not meeting like a, a younger Panay. He, she was older. I'm gonna, I guess, 45. He was that kind of guy, more conservative. So anyway, yeah, uh, meeting friends is great on the boardwalk. Now, after some walking on the boardwalk, I would get a little bit hungry and I'd feel like getting some food. So there was a favorite Indian place owned by an Indian, but it wasn't really Indian place, but I loved going there. But uh, let me stop right there, guys. Um, if, if you're not subscribed, guys, please subscribe. Please subscribe. You know, I started this channel to make more friends. I want to be friends. Uh, please subscribe so we can uh, get to know each other better. I mean, making new friends who are interested in the fills, that's the only reason I made this YouTube channel. Because I'm not really into like Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those things. But anyway, back to the story. Um, yeah, so this Indian place, it's, it's not an Indian. They don't sell Indian food, some Indian food, but it's mainly just a variety of lots of ethnic food. So it was just owned by a Indian guy who was married to a Panay. By the way, if I'm gonna show the restaurant here on Google Maps. Now, if anyone's there, please tell me if it's still open, if it survived the, uh, if it survived the scary virus thing because even 7-elevens closed during the scary virus so i'm wondering this guy i hope he made it because i would love to visit him again anyway great guy he had a well-trained staff of panais preparing the food for the guests and uh, they did a great job it was it's big portions of food at a good reasonable price and friendly service now he had lots of stuff now i always like to get the macaroni salad I love the macaroni salad he made there, but I was always tempted to try lots of stuff and I did, but sort of, I would always go back to the macaroni salad and it was always good. I never once had food there that was not good. 
So, uh, yeah, another story of a friend I made there. I was sitting at this Indian place. I just call it an Indian place. It's not. And there was another guy sitting there, American guy. He was sitting there, too, by himself. I'm always sitting by myself. Yeah, obviously, uh, the Indian restaurant was not called Swirls. Um, but anyway, I was sitting right here on this end chair here, and he was sitting right there where about that girl is. So he and I were having a bit of a chit chat, but we finished our meals and he suggested we go to Bose and uh, continue our chat. So I love this. It's the start of a new friendship. So yeah, we hopped on his scooter together and uh, we scooted down to Bose. Stood up and paid our bills and we got on his scooter somewhere here. And we just zoomed the hell out of there. I'm sitting on the back of a scooter, and let's see here. We come down to the waterfronts, and no, there's no bromance like some of you are commenting in the comment section, like me and Gio had a bromance. There's no bromance here. We, he and I, we're heading down to, not Tom and Tom's, we're heading down to Bose and we sat down you can't really see it well right, right in the front here on the patio so this guy was an interesting character he retired at 55 years old from the uh, u.s postal service he was not a mail carrier he was a plumber in one of the headquarters he was based out of uh wisconsin i believe anyway so let me tell you about this guy he's 60 years old okay so he retired at 55 right now he's 60 years old this guy, he, a uh, very friendly guy. He had, he had a, a nice pension from the U.S. Uh, Postal Service. And he had two apartments in Phil's. He had one apartment in the outskirts of Cagayandoro, and he had another apartment in Bayawan. So he spent two weeks at each place. So in his CDO apartment, he had a 17-year-old nanny. <laughs> So this girl, excuse me here, guys. I know she's too young, but that's, I'm just telling you what happened. This is not me. It's not my nanny. It's his nanny. Let's bring this guy down. I'm telling you what his situation is, okay? So, I mean, she would cook, clean, spread her legs, do the shopping, and uh, she only worked the two uh, weeks a month. So he paid her a paltry sum of 4,000 pesos for those two weeks, but I guess that's equivalent to 8,000 pesos. And he says, you know, he, she didn't have to do much because... It was just a one bedroom little place and um, uh, it was just him. So she just has to cook for the two people. And he says what, what they would do is they would cook one big meal and spread it out over two days. But I mean, it is a poultry sum considering what she was providing him, if you know what I mean. Spreading her leg. I mean, I thought 4K is a bit low, but um, according to him, she was happy with the situation. Hey. Don't arrest the messenger, okay? Let's bring this guy down. So as far as I know, I mean, 17 is illegal, okay? Um, and I told him, isn't 17 considered a minor in the Philippines? I mean, as far as I know, the law is you can't even be alone with somebody who is under 18. If you're a foreigner and she and the person is under 18, you can't be alone. There's got to be an adult Filipino present. That's the rule as I know it. So his reply was that that rule, it's only in the Philippines outside of Mindanao. So he said, okay, now I emphasize, he said that Mindanao is a separate province of the Philippines and they don't follow the federal rules to a T. He says, I mean, they don't care. He's, she's been there for uh, as long as she's been there. People in the building, they know the situation. Hey, I mean, what he wants to do is up to him, you know? I'm all for doing whatever you want to do, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Bring this guy down. So let me tell you uh, the story of this girl, the 17-year-old nanny, okay? So she came from, uh, as he said, the mountains around CDO. Maybe it's Bukidnon, I'm not sure, but she came into CDO looking for work. So she uh, dropped out of school a long time ago. She's a school, I guess a high school or middle school dropout. I don't know what level she got to, but uh, she was looking for work. There was no work where she was. She wants to help her family. So she went into CDO to look for work as a nanny, just as her friend was doing. So he, this uh, friend, uh, 
acquaintance guy. Um, he was in 7-Eleven one time having a cool drink, enjoying the air con a bit. So this girl, the 17-year-old, she was at another table, neighboring table in the 7-Eleven, um, there sitting down with her friend, her roommate. So the guy, he said hello, he wanted to talk to them, and uh, so they got to talk and he said, where are you from? He said, are you from here? She said, she is from an hour away. So he said, well, what are you doing here? He, she, she said, looking for a job, and just right away, he offered her a job. And so that very day, the girl went back to his place. So this guy, he also had a girlfriend in Bayouan. So he's got the nanny and CDO, uh, a girlfriend in Bayouan, but he considers the, the Bayouan girl like a, a best friend, a good friend. So this guy, he is divorced in America with some kids and he's clear he is not getting married again. And I can tell from his speak, he's not interested in even having a relationship. Now this guy, I mean, he, he goes home to Wisconsin every year, but the guy doesn't even fly. He travels from Philippines to Wisconsin by land and boat. Uh, yeah, he won't fly um, and uh, he says the only time he's afraid during this route home is going from England to uh, uh, New York by boat. I mean, I didn't even know you could get a boat from England to New York. I mean, why have a boat? Everybody flies. But uh, apparently you can. It's called, uh, it's called the Queen Mary or something like that. So anyway, that is enough of that guy. I just met him the one time. We kept in touch on phone, but eventually uh, when I got back here, we stopped talking. So anyway, that's enough of that guy. So anyway, uh, by this time, after walking on the boardwalk, getting some food, I mean, I was ready to head back home. I mean, I needed a shower, I needed air con, I needed to lie in bed, because remember, I'm walking everywhere, right? So I'm really happy to get home and lie in bed. And after sweating and walking around all day, it was really comfortable to, you know, have a shower, just be comfortable in bed with the air con. I mean, I was, could, could have just lay there all day. And I would, I would just stay there all day unless I felt a bit hungry. So nearby the uh, Airbnb, there was a mall, okay? And at this mall, there was a mang inasol. So I would go there for dinner if I felt hungry. If I wanted some mang inasol for dinner, if I got a bit hungry, let's uh, go up here. I would come out here and there's a bunch of trikes going by. It's quite trike heavy. Uh, there's not any on the map at the momento, but you know, I would just walk down here, right on this sidewalk here, walking down. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're walking down, and I was looking for the place where I always bought banana queue. Oh, I think it's right there. Yeah. Anyway, minor detail. Walking down, and we're almost there at the mall where I pick up my mang in a cell. Let's see. Oh, these people are no longer there. There's a bunch of uh, homeless people selling fruit along here. And they were selling fruit, I mean, 24 hours a day, seven days a week kind of thing. They lived in some hut, but obviously that has been taken away. It's no longer there. Yeah, that's too bad. Um... Some nice kids there. They'd give me a high five when I pass by. Let's see. Where are we going here? Is that mall still there? We're going down to a mall. Oh, here we are. Yeah. And yeah, here we are. This is the big, uh, what do you call it? Place where they buy clothes. What do you call those? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, that's not it. Anyway, here it is. The big mall in here. There's a mang in a cell. There's a big food court here with a mang in a cell. Um, and all those places. So yeah, that's where I went every day. So it was nice having that mall nearby with a bunch of food choices. Um, but anyway, that is a typical day in Dumaguete. But not every day was exactly like this, right? Uh, for example, so over the two months I was there, I would be on the internet at night because remember the trading time in the Philippines is at nighttime, New York it's daytime. So I'm watching the stock market and, you know, quite often, okay, this is the thing you don't hear about much on YouTube about Dumaguete, the internet would die. 
So if it was a critical moment for my trading, I would uh, bring my laptop down to the McDonald's in downtown because it was 24 hours a day and I guess they had backup generators. It was always internet, electric, it was always working there. Now you gotta realize like between my place and the McDonald's, that walk, uh, there was like at 4 a.m. There's like prostitutes and people walking around who I didn't necessarily want to bump into. So there's some, you know, nefarious environments, you know, at that time. And here is Scotty Boy with my laptop on my back, my cell phone in my pocket. Probably not the best move for Scotty Boy, but hey, I mean, if it's 4 a.m. and I can't sleep because I've got insomnia sometimes, I mean, I'm bored. There's no internet. I can't, I'm bored, right? So it's more exciting to head out with my laptop on my back, get a bit of, get a bit of danger going on, get some adrenaline flowing. You know, I enjoyed the excitement of looking over my shoulder. I did the same thing when I was in CDO. So let me tell you uh, one of my low points in Dumaguete, and you gotta forgive me on this one, okay? But let me tell you my low point in Duma. So I'm in Chow King and um, I'm in the back of the line to order. There's about, I don't know, five people in front of me. Now, if you know about Phil's lineups, they move incredibly slow. The cashier dude, he was having a bit of probs with, it looked like the receipt machine. So the guy, the cashier, he's tinkering around with it, trying to fix it. And then he goes to the back. He's getting the manager. Now you got to realize he's not like rushing to the back. He's like, you know, just walking, you know, I mean, he was, I mean, slowly. He just saunters on back to get the manager. So the manager comes out and, you know, they're both checking on this receipt thing. And then they both just walk back to the back. So they leave this lineup that I'm in just standing there. I mean, the other lines are moving, but there's no direction of, you know, we're closed on this one. Can you go? I mean, they're not saying anything. Now, I don't know what came over me at this moment, but Scotty boy yelled out, what the F is wrong with you guys? Yes, I know what you're saying. Scotty boy, you should not be saying that in the fills. Hey, I know, I know. Look, I've been there going there for 20 years it's the first time in my life i've ever lost my temper in the philippines it is unlike me very unlike me and i don't know what came over me i mean the usual scotty boy i'll just you know walk out if i'm not happy and find somewhere else to eat i think it was just kind of like the very fact that you know it wasn't the problem there that they were having it was just like they didn't care didn't care that, that that's what would that's what got to me anyway I was so ashamed I yelled and I stormed out of there not like anyone gave a crap but uh, yeah I never went back there again because hey I was ashamed of myself so yeah that was uh, my one low point in Duma now let me tell you about a high point in Duma I was in the McDo. I went there uh, sometimes to get my favorite. I got a coffee and uh, my pancakes with a butter and maple syrup. Growing up, I had uh, maple syrup almost every morning um, with my Eggo waffles. So, I mean, having maple syrup with pancakes in McDonald's, uh, it just feels good. So I'm there one morning. Um, I just woke up. There wasn't an electrical problem at home. There wasn't an internet problem. I just woke up and um, instead of Thomas Toms, I went to McDonald's. But it was a bit noisy one morning because there were some university kids there. Uh, they were working on a project, I guess, and they were kind of noisy and, you know, Scotty boy, I just wanted to enjoy my coffee in peace. So I went off into the uh, closed off area. I just opened the door and walked in. And then what happened was the security guy came, he opened the door after me and he walked in and you know, I sort of said, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just those kids were noisy. That's why I came in here. Anyway, the guy was cool. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. So it turns out this guy, he just wanted to chat. So this guy, he was a 55-year-old uh, guy, the security guard there at McDonald's. A very friendly guy. Um, so he and I were chatting for about 30 minutes or so. So he was living in, uh, the name slipped my mind, you know, up the road from Duma, there's um, sort of a mountainous area. 
Valencia, yeah, Valencia. And I regret not spending, I've never been to Valencia, I regret not spending time up there. I could have just gone up there for a day and gotten to know the area, but I never did, I, I kind of regret that. So anyway, this guy's telling me about his job. He says he's so happy, he feels so lucky to have a job as a security guard in the McDonald's. He says he, he works 12 hours a day. So he literally just stands there for 12 hours a day, but he makes, he makes uh, 25,000 pesos a month. And the guy, he's got two kids, he's got a wife, so uh, this 25,000 uh, sort of takes care of his family. He's got two teenagers, he's got a daughter and a son. And another friend I made. Now I was at the checkout in Robinson's grocery. So I'm there and you know, it's the obligatory, waiting for a long time. I'm in front of him, he's behind me, we're talking and uh, you know, we pay for our stuff and we say, hey, why don't we get a um, coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts? It was right next door. There, we paid for our stuff. We walked out here and uh, the Dunkin' Donuts is right here. So we went in there, we sat right at the corner table here. And so we had a chat for about an hour. So yeah, um, we sat down, we had a chat. So this guy, he's about 65 years old, retired. Um, so he's got his pension and he, uh, he's, he's planning to teach English online to supplement his income. Okay, so another story in the same Robinson's Grocery. I met Ned and Chichai from, I forgot the name of their channel, but I think you know who I'm talking about. I was just in there minding my own beeswax, looking for food, and these two walked in. So they walk in, they walked right past me. It was Chi Chai first and huge Ned behind. This guy's huge. He, anyway, he's behind Chi Chai. Chi Chai is smaller than I thought. Ned is bigger than I thought. When I say big, I mean just huge, like his shoulders are huge, like a football player. Anyway, I said to him, hey, I watch your YouTube channel, Nimrod. Okay, well, the guy's probably heard this 500 times. And the way he uh, replied, it was kind of like, yeah, I've, have, I've heard this probably a thousand times. So yeah, Ned, uh, he just mumbled something and walked away. Chichai had no expression on her face. But yeah, I later Ned was having a live and I was in there chatting and I told him, I told him, I saw you in, I saw you in Robinson's and... Um, you, you did not even say hi to me. And he replied, yeah, that probably sounds like me. So on this live, Ned said he doesn't uh, uh, communicate much with foreigners there in, in Duma. I said, I, yeah, yeah, I've been in, going to Phil's for a while. Every foreigner I've talked to has been great. The only person who has not been great has been you. Anyway, I meant it lightheartedly, but uh, anyway, a few days later, coincidentally, when I was on the bench talking to that UK farmer guy, okay, at that time, uh, Chi Chai was walking down the boulevard with a friend and hey, we made eye contact and we smiled. Now, I don't know what that smile meant, but hey, she's a hot chick, man. But hey, I won't go there because she is a married woman. But I'll tell you one thing, hey, as a can man, okay, if you can read between the lines, she had a great pair of cans. Hey, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, now the last story from Duma Getty. Okay, typical life of Duma. There is a homeless young lady there. Stop me if you know this girl, okay? Now there is a homeless single mom who walks around uh, Duma Getty, um, the downtown area. I talked to her a few times, okay? Uh, so she got prego at a young age and the guy who got her pregnant, he died. So she is homeless, but she sleeps at a church in downtown Duma. So now let me know if you actually know who this person is, if you know who I'm talking about, but it just seems she's kind of uh, a basket case. She sort of got, she's not getting a good, she does not have a good life. Okay, but it seems, now this is my impression, she's got this goal to hunt for a foreign dude so that he can take care of her. And I don't blame her, okay? I'm just telling you my perception of this. So she, this girl, she hunted Scotty Boy like a stealth during the, during the two months that I was there. So the first time I saw her, I was standing in line at McDonald's and uh, next thing I know, this girl's talking to me. And so I assumed she was some patron who was in line who was going to order. I didn't know the details at the time, but you know, when we stopped talking, uh, she just left. So obviously 
she sort of came in to talk to me. I think uh, she saw me through the window and you know, she is hunting a foreigner. So she came in and- In the lineup I was in about right here. And so she was walking down this street here and uh, I guess she saw Scotty boy. She walks in the door and she starts talking to me. Now, when we stopped talking, I was surprised to see that uh, she walked back out because that was the first time I had met her. Talk to me, you know, hey, good for her. I mean, I know that's not an easy thing to do. So after that moment, we kept bumping into each other in downtown Duma and one time was in the Robinson's grocery. So I was in there by myself. I was walking up and down the aisles looking for something good to buy. I mean, I mean, Robinson's really sucks. There's just nothing unique there. Anyway, now, next thing I know, she's there, the homeless lady's there again, behind me. And she's sort of following me and I saw her and, you know, it was like, she's sort of suggesting food that's good and sort of what she can make. Oh, I can make this sauce if I have this ingredient, like this kind of thing. Uh, kind of like showing what a good girlfriend she could be, what good food she can make for me. She's sort of hinting at this. So, you know, she's suggesting this food. I'm saying, oh, oh, that's cool. You know, it's, it's like, I don't want to deal with her at the same time, I feel sorry for her. Because this girl, if I didn't mention, I mean, she's always holding her baby. She's got this baby on her, like holding him 24 hours a day. Anyway, that after that Robinson's episode, you know, I left empty handed. I didn't want to buy anything at Robinson's. Uh, so I, went to the Indian place, which was just a 30 second walk away. And so I'm sitting there uh, just outside eating my meal and uh, she passes by me like, I don't know, three or four times. Now in, in hindsight, I, didn't, I honestly didn't know it at the time, but she probably was hoping I would offer her uh, a meal. Um, I walked down here and um, didn't find any food to bring home and whip up in the stove. So I went down here and I went to my favorite Indian place down here, now called Swirls. And uh, so she was walking on this side. She sort of paced back and forth like this on this street here. She wanted me to, there wasn't this many cars at the time, but she wanted me to get, uh, she wanted my attention. Now I was sitting outside in front here on the sidewalk here, about right here. And I noticed her, but you know, I didn't, I just pretended like I did not notice her. But at the time I just saw it like, uh, this is kind of awkward, you know, because in hindsight, I, if, if I went back in time, I would have just offered her a meal. She can sit down and have food. I didn't want her to sit down with me, but she could sit down at another table and have food. Anyway, any guy in Duma, Okay, if you know Duma, like, let me know. Do, do you know who I'm talking about? I'm kind of curious if, because I know she's not only doing this to me. The, the, the weird thing is, it was just kind of like there was 10 of her. I mean, it was her, I know it was her, but it was kind of like there was 10 of her. She was just everywhere. I mean, one time I was in Robinson's Mall, not the grocery store, the big mall, and um, I'm in line to buy some Korean gimpop, and boom, she's next thing, she's right there next to me with her baby. She starts talking to me. I mean, this girl is just everywhere. Anyway, I got my Gimpop and, because I already paid, I was just waiting for it, right? But I, I got my Gimpop and, you know, I'm just walking around and she's sort of just there behind me. Kind of awkward. So I went up to some security dude and, uh, you know, I started talking to him just because uh, I was trying to get rid, I, w I wasn't saying anything about the girl. I was just uh, like, if I'm talking to someone, she'll walk away. Because it's kind of awkward, you know, she's following me. I don't really want her following me. I just kind of want her to, you know, peacefully, you know, get off my back. Because the thing is, man, if you just give her money in this kind of situation, she's just going to look at you always to give her money, you know? So you got to be careful with this kind of thing. So yeah, anyway, after I was uh, had a bit of a chit chat with the security dude, anyway, uh, I look around, she's gone. So I start, you know, sauntering around again and eventually I left. Okay, and as I'm leaving, I see her again. So I, now I'm the one approaching her uh, because she's in the way of where I'm going. Anyway, what is she doing? She's sort of pacing back and forth in front of this foreign guy who's sitting there by himself at a coffee shop. He's at a little table having his coffee and she's sort of, you know, standing there trying to make eye contact with him, walking around, trying to make eye contact with him. And I, I see this as I'm walking down. I pass her, hoping she doesn't follow me <laughs> and I keep going home. Yeah. Uh Scotty boy is exiting down here, okay? Just to give you a lay of the land here. And 
The guy is sitting here having a coffee. There was a coffee shop here before. Um, so he's sitting here. The girl is hanging around down here. So I walked down here. The girl didn't see me, okay? And so, yeah, I pass right by here and I continue walking home. I mean, what a girl, you know, I respect her. She's got a goal to get a foreign boyfriend and she's focused on this goal. So I respect her, she's got a goal. She would probably make a great girlfriend to some older guy who, you know, he lives by himself. He wants someone to take care of him, you know, clean up make his food and stuff. She just probably lived there with her son and you know, she just wants a home. She wants a future for her son. So I totally respect what this girl's trying to do. And I do, I hope she meets some some guy who will willing to take care of her. So anyway, yeah, this uh, video, it was a typical day in the life of uh, a single bloke, namely Scotty Boy, but it could be anybody living in Duma Getty by himself. It, it's a pretty boring life, but hey, that's what I like. So yeah, okay guys, my next video is gonna be of my housing situation there in Duma Getty. Of course, hey, there's always a story to be told. I'm gonna tell you the story of Scotty Boy's living situation in Duma Getty. So guys, please, please click subscribe please hit that like button, guys, and I am going to see you very soon.